What's going on? In this video, I'm going to be fabricating a custom stainless steel base out of tubing and sheet metal for my custom mailbox. I need to make a template and figure out exactly where I want the two support pads to land on here. That way I have something to match up the back main post to and then something to build the curve to. This is the second part of this video. In the first part, I built the top of this mailbox, but you don't have to go watch it now. Uh, it doesn't really matter what order you watch these in. I'll leave a link to it down below. So I know my tubing is two and a half inches by two and a half inches or 63 by 63. So I wanna come in about three inches or 76 millimeters on each side. I wanna keep it a decent distance between them because it's gonna allow me to have a more pronounced curve. Now I need to measure over two and a half inches or 63 millimeters and make a line. I'm just gonna make a bunch of dashes and then connect them and then that'll be the shape of each side. I'm already seeing I'm gonna run into a problem. My sheet metal curve here is gonna have some pretty sharp edges where my main piece of tubing has a pretty good radius right here. Um, so I'm gonna see what this looks like when I get it done. Worst case is I'm going to have to weld along all four sides of this and then grind it sharper to match this. Hoping I don't have to do that. This is a piece of 045 stainless or 1.16 millimeters thick uh, sheet. Just a little scrap piece. I think it's gonna be enough to fit all my pieces on here, hopefully. Whenever you're cutting, uh, whether it's with a Beverly shear or just a pair of hand tin snips, you want to make sure you push the material all the way up in, in there every time you cut. Otherwise, you'll end up with these little fish hooks that you'll have to get rid of later. Okay, now I'm going to attempt to tack this all together and make it nice and square so it looks like a piece of tubing. Uh, I'm gonna use some 045 312. I don't know what stainless this is. I've had this sheet for many years and I wiped it off a long time ago, which is dumb. I think 312 will be fine. This came up with an idea. I saw that my vise squeezed this pretty straight. So I'm thinking if I extend it a little bit, I can at least hold the one part pretty straight while I'm tacking which should help me a lot. Now I need to figure out a way to get these two edges lined up the best I can. So they're this way at least for the first tack. All right, well now the only thing is to just weld it up. Uh, it's nice and square, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I've got some clamps over here to help me keep it that way. And yeah, I'm just gonna burn in here pretty heavily. It's probably not gonna be the prettiest weld because I wanna get really good penetration. That way I can grind over the corners as much as I feel comfortable with and I won't worry about them cracking. And that's hopefully gonna save me a 
ton of work on the regular post and not have to do any welding on it other than welding this to it. Okay, now I'm gonna let it cool down and then I'm gonna grind off the corners and round them over here before I attach it to anything. That way, if I need to add, like here, I might need to add a little bit more weld. Any of that, I can do that now. And then we'll do the final finishing after it's welded to the post so we can finish it all together so it looks nice and uniform, in theory. All right, before I go any farther, I wanted to tell you about this video sponsor, which is Empire Abrasives. They're really gonna be doing all the heavy lifting on this project. Uh, to round off these corners, I got all kinds of stuff here. I got the flap disc, which is super, super fast at removing material, the regular abrasive disc, and then a couple different surface conditioning discs. That's what I'm gonna be trying to use to round off these corners and see if there's anything else I need to fill in. And then uh, later on, I got something I'm super excited about that I ordered from them. It's this big drum, and that's what we're going to be using to finish off this whole thing and blend it into the regular post and make it look really good. I ordered a special tool for it and everything. Uh, if it doesn't turn out, don't blame them. I've never done it before, but uh, their stuff is great. If you're in need of some abrasives, you can head on over to empireabrasives.com, and you can use promo code VOSS at checkout, and you'll get 10% off your first order. So thank you again to Empire Abrasives for sponsoring this video. Okay, I think I'm going to square this up on the edge of my table, clamp it down, and then I can use this edge to kind of eyeball it and make sure they're pretty close to each other. The way I'm going to bolt it to the bottom of the mailbox is just going to be with some countersunk bolts through the floor of the actual box into these plates that are going to go here and here. They slightly overhang the edge. So I think I'm going to finish this off and blend it before I put these on. That way this can lay flat on the table over there easier and I could easier get to the end.
Okay, here we go in the uh, highly experimental part, at least for me. I would imagine people who, you know, finish off like kitchen grade, what's it called, like sanitary welding and stuff, know all about this kind of stuff and finishing off stainless steel, but I don't. Um, this is the first time I've ever seen one of these before. Uh, I found these drums on Empire Abrasive's website and I didn't know what they were for or what kind of tool you put them on. I thought maybe you like did an attachment for an angle grinder or something. But in the description, it said for burnishers and listed off a bunch of other stuff. So I actually just searched burnisher and some stuff like this started coming up. Now this doesn't say burnisher anywhere on it. It did have it in the description, but I don't know if that's the official name for these or if it's just some kind of a surface conditioning tool or what. But anyway, this piece inside here has these four slots in a keyway. And then this has a shaft with two keys on each side that allow this to slide over. And then you just bolt it on. That way it spins in this motion, giving you grind marks all in the same direction. This is exactly how this comes from Empire Braces website. It's just all together ready to go. If you want to do more sandpaper, like this is a piece of 120, then you have to buy this arbor or uh, mandrel, whatever you call it, it's rubber with the same system on the inside. And the sandpaper slides over it, just like any other drum, you know, for your angle grinder. And then this will fit onto here. You just line up any set of the grooves and drop it on. And then this one's held on by a bolt and a washer. I'm assuming most of the other ones are the same. Uh, you can buy these for all different amounts of money. Not sure if they range over a thousand, but definitely in the three, $400 range. I found this one on uh, Amazon for, I think it's about $86 right now. So it's probably not the nicest one, but I've never used one before. And I wanted a tool to use these drums with. And I thought it would be perfect to finish off this post and give it a nice even grind, you know, kind of like the front of a stainless steel fridge or something close. For, you know, only 86 bucks, it's way bigger than I thought it was going to be. I don't know what its durability is. But it's not like I'm in a production environment. All right, here goes nothing. I'm gonna use the 120 grit first. Uh, the speed's on max for this of six, which says is 3,000 revolutions a minute. Can go down to 500 on one. So here's the finish we got right now. Didn't really hit the corners. Probably do that first with the, uh, the other pad. And I also took it a little easy on the sheet metal piece since it wasn't perfectly flat. It worked really well on the tube. Uh, and then there's like some low spots in the uh, sheet metal part. So I think the surface conditioning drum will fill those in nicely, but uh, the sanding disc worked really well on the square tube. I really like how this part finished out on this nice square, perfect piece of tubing. Um, but I didn't really like blend this perfectly enough for what kind of a mirror finish this is giving me. So I'm gonna go over it at the very end with a hand pad and kind of mat it up a little bit, doll it up, take that shine off of it. I think that'll help really blend everything together better. First, I'm gonna weld the ends on before I do that because it's probably gonna get a little scratch on the table and this will help take those out too.
All right, it's tacked on there. I don't think I'm gonna weld it solid. Just gonna do some stitches and uh, hopefully it doesn't tip over and kill me. This is my template from earlier that I just cut off one half, but this up against the edge of the mailbox locates these right in the center where I wanted them. So I'm just gonna line this one up with here and then transfer my holes. these a little bit bigger hopefully just to make life easier when I'm assembling it and then I shouldn't have to countersink them as much either now I'm going to do that a uh, little buff down here with this pad and uh, then I'll put it together bought these little black washers from Tractor Supply to try and get the big stainless pad off of the aluminum so it doesn't corrode, um, hopefully. And I'm just using these little countersunk uh, flathead screws. All right, there it is, eye level mailbox. Now, but uh, once this gets stuck in the ground, it should be about perfect height. Um, I might do a little bit of polishing on the base yet before I do that and get some of these scratches out of here. But other than that, I'm happy with how it looks. Uh, like I said, the paint is yet to be seen how well it holds up, but we'll see, I can always fix that later. The only thing I really have to do now is take this into the local post office and get the postmaster to approve it, I think. Um, the way I understand it and from what I've read, you can either bring in your plans if you wanna build a custom mailbox and have them pre-approve it, or you can take the final mailbox in and have them look it over. I don't know if they give some kind of a marking to put on it or how that works exactly. Uh, I just hope that all works out the way it should. Um, thanks again to Empire Abrasives for their support of the channel and sponsoring this video. If you wanna check them out, please use the link down below. And if you are in need of some abrasives for your next project and you've never ordered from them before, make sure you use promo code Voss at checkout for that extra 10%. Uh, if you're new here, I make welding and fabrication videos here on YouTube. I hope you stick around and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you did not enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.